Hello everyone and welcome back to Statics. So this time we're going over the equilibrium of a particle, the free body diagram, and completer force systems. What are those things? Well, stay tuned and you'll find out. There we go. So first off, at the end of this you're going to understand what a free body diagram is. And you can be able to apply those equations of equilibrium to solve a 2D problem. How are we going to get there? Well, through several steps, but we'll take it one at a time. So first off, why do we need to know this? Well, let's say you're lifting a big load, like this one right here. And you need to know, can that hook actually hold the load? If it can't, it falls and some poor worker might get destroyed. So you need to know that hook can hold the load. Now, intuitively, you're probably guessing, well, this, the hook has to be able to hold the weight. So if the hook can hold that amount of weight, it should be fine. And you'll be correct. There is some force that the hook is applying up to hold it, and it has to be equal to the weight. Now, that's a free body diagram right there. You just did that kind of instinctively. However, we need to find a more um, procedural approach to making a free body diagram. Because we have other situations which aren't quite as easy to understand. For example, in this case, if I'm not just looking at the hook, what about these two bars right here? Um, will they fail? Will they pass? Your first thought might be thinking, well, you know, if this point right here has to hold the weight, then each of those has to hold half the weight. So they can hold, you know, weight over two, they'll fail, or so they'll pass. And the answer is wrong. Um, they would actually fail. They could only hold weight over two. Now, why is that? We'll find out soon. But there is a good reason for it. I'll show you how to learn that on your own. But let's look at one more example. In this next example, we see that there's a boat, and once again, we have these two ropes um, being held here. Now, this looks very three-dimensional to you. You're probably like, oh, that's a lot of you know, X, Y, and Z axis here. However, even though it is three-dimensional, um, it's not actually going to be an issue for us because this rope, this rope, and this rope are actually in the same plane. We could redraw this just as a Y, um, because all those are in the same plane. And so it's actually a very easy system to solve. So what is a coplanar force system? It's where, you know, discounting the size of the ropes and the weights, um, we can say that all the forces are acting in the same plane. For example, all three of these ropes are in the plane of your screen that you're watching right now. Now let's see if one of those curved planes, that plane is flat, and so all three of these ropes that you're looking at are in the same plane. They are coplanar. Another thing we can learn is that if nothing is moving, if the system isn't moving, then every single point in that system must also be stationary. It must be in equilibrium. Now, equilibrium does not equal stationary, just as a note. Things can be moving and be in equilibrium. It just means that the object is not accelerating. If it's not moving to begin with, then not accelerating means it's not moving. If it um, is moving at some speed, then it is, um, and it's not accelerating, then it's going to continue to move at that speed. So now if we want to determine the tensions in the cables for some given weight of cylinder, you're going to need to learn how to draw a free body diagram and apply those equations of equilibrium. Okay, so let's figure out how to do that. Now, free body diagrams are one of those most important things you can learn because they're used everywhere. In your physics class, you're going to use it. In statics and dynamics and solid mechanics, you're going to need to know how to use it. So make sure that you really take this in. So first off, what is it? Well, it's a drawing that shows all the external forces acting on a particle. And why do we want to know this? Because it's really important to be able to understand what's going on. What forces are there? Um, what are the angles? You might have something that you don't know, and using a free body diagram, you can solve for that eventually. Now, how do we you do this? Well, first off, you take a particle and you get rid of, you just draw a circle around what you care about. So in this case, we care about point A, and so we drew a circle around point A. And everything outside of that circle just disappears, no longer exists. But we can't just get rid of it, we have to replace it with a force. So every single rope I cut, I replaced with a force. I then have to name those forces to make it a little bit easier on myself. Um, so the force that's pointing towards point B is force B. 
force that's pointing to point D is force D, and the force that is caused by the weight is force C. And you see this is 392.4 Newtons here. Why is it 392.4 instead of 40? Well, remember that 40 kilograms is mass, forces are weights, or weight is a force. So you had to convert, and we did that by taking mass times gravity. Gravity is 9.81, and that's where we got that from. Okay, so with this, we've gotten just a little bit of an experience um, drawing a free body diagram. And next time, we'll talk about how we can use this free body diagram to then solve for our unknowns force B and force D. So I hope this makes sense. Even if it didn't, don't worry too terribly much, because next time, we're going to be jumping into this in more detail. And we're going to do several examples. I hope this helped you, and I'll see all of you next time. Bye-bye.